Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about breeding soils. Uh, we've made a few videos on breeding soils in the past. Um, it's been a forever evolving topic on the farm. We're trying to find new ways uh, to, one, not only set up the bins for breeding soils to make sure the crickets can get in there and actually breed as many eggs as possible. But the second thing is time. Time is the biggest factor with uh, cricket farming. I've mentioned it before on the channel, but we are always trying to find new ways, faster ways to actually farm crickets. And the reason for that is because it's sustainable. Um, if you're working countless hours um, and you're having to pay an hourly rate, especially here in Australia, an hourly rate can range between 20 to 25 dollars for minimum wage and that's that's not even enough money really for people so you need to be paying them more than that so yeah it's um one of those things that if we're going to expand the farm then we need to find new ways that we can pack up or we need to find new ways that we can make farming crickets more efficient and that is what we're going to be discussing today which is breeding soils <music> So, where we got to with breeding soils, if you've been paying attention to the other videos on the channel, we have switched up what we actually put our coconut husk into, and now we have fully converted. So, we used to use these big trays just here. Um, the reason why we stopped using them was because it took so long to actually put the soil in here. So, we had to put about seven to eight handfuls of soil into here just to fill this one container and we actually found that we only need two for these smaller ones. Now, the question that we kind of asked ourselves was, is, like, are the crickets still gonna breed into the small containers and are there, uh, is there gonna be enough room for them to breed into? Like, so, I'll show you an example of that in a minute when we go inside, but just in terms of the time of how quickly um, you could set the containers up, right? Super, super quick. Right, well and truly we saved over half the time we actually spent putting the breeding soils together every single day. So that was one of the real big benefits of it. And now I'll head inside the container and I'll tell you the other benefits that we found with these smaller containers. Now, of course, when you have a bigger container of breeding soil, you have more crickets on there, which is great, right? <laughs> When you're trying to do a full, if, if you say you had every single one of these containers breeding, you have to go in and you have to get all the crickets off of the breeding soil. Now, there is one thing, I've seen a lot of farms, they use the net, right? So they've got a piece of like, really, really it's like it's almost what you have on your screen doors at the front of your house, right? So then the flies don't get in or any insects, but you can still have wind come in. So a lot of people put that, like it's just like little chook wiring almost over top of them. So, and the reason why they do that is because they're worried about the crickets eating the eggs. Now, what we've found is you don't actually need to put the nets over it. Yes, the crickets might still eat the eggs. However, you're gonna be having so many eggs in every single bin, it's just ridiculous anyway. Like the crickets, they breed like crazy. And also, you can kind of reduce the amount of eggs being eaten by making sure they have fresh food regularly. And we do that every three days, right? And that also stops them from eating each other as well. So if they have enough food and water in the bins, they won't do it anyway. But one of the big, big benefits what we found is, let's just take this for example, right? Now you could imagine if you had a big tub in here breeding, you'd have so many crickets on there. But with these little ones, you just have to pick it up, give it a few knocks on the edge of the soil, I have to blow them off a little bit. One more to come, all right? And that's done. All the crickets have been removed. And then all I have to do is take it here, put it on the tray, sitting there, and I grab the next one. Whereas like we were finding we were sitting there for ages, like blowing off all the crickets, <laughs> trying to get them off. It would just take forever. Like it was just time consuming. We didn't want to do it anymore. And um, we were like, okay, is that actually going to affect our population? Probably not, because <laughs> what we found is we never really had enough crickets in our bins, right? So this bin is about a meter by a meter, 
and we found that we can get around about 5,000 adults in every single bin breeding, like that's the minimum. We can obviously have more than that, but we get about 5,000 minimum. And we found that those 5,000 crickets, they still lay the exact same amount of eggs in one of these small ones as they do a big one. And actually, if I put it on the side just here, you'll be able to see all the eggs. So you can actually see all those little white dots along the edge, that's all eggs. And that's also a really great thing about these little small containers, the clear ones, is we can actually see how many eggs are being laid into every bin. So I'm actually just gonna put that one back in there. So that is one of the benefits that we've found with these smaller containers. Um, and yeah, so time efficiency is a big one like how long it actually takes to pack it up, you know, put the breeding soils, um, or put the breeding soil into the container. And then also what we found is just how quick it is to get the crickets off the soil, right? And we, we power now. You know, if, if one person's doing this by themselves, to be able to do the feed, the water, and the breeding soils, you can do it in about an hour for the two containers, three times a week, incredible. Okay, and then the last thing that we found to be really, really efficient is the actually taking the breeding soils out of the container. So after all the pinheads have been um, hatched and they were running around, we then remove all the breeding soils. And say I've got this old breeding soil just here, right? All I have to do is we have, we, we actually recycle our coconut husk, so we we do three full cycles before we have to then grab new stuff. And we actually, we still use this, we recycle it again. So because it's obviously got a little bit of frost in it and it has some feed in there, so it's just got some extra fertilizer. Um, and then it's also really great at holding uh, water. So what we do is we spread this throughout our garden and fruit block and it just increases the overall water retention and it adds a little bit of extra fertilizer to the farm. But what we do with this is we just have to go onto the site here and we just knock it off into the bin, done. We might, if the really, really wet ones or just like the ones that have a fair amount of like steel coconut husk on it, we will use a little brush like this and we just give it a little scrape around. But what we found is that is just the quickest way to do your breeding soils. Like it's so, so quick. Um, and yeah, that is, literally just what we do now with our breeding soils and it might change in the future like we've got this new facility coming along and you know we're still tossing up what we want to do with our bins so at the moment we're using the totes I know a lot of people call them totes we just call them shuttles so the big white containers that we breed the crickets in we're not sure if we're going to use those or if we're going to use longer bigger bins and I think it's important for people that have um, cricket farms or they don't have the exact same setup as us, just be aware that the more crickets you're gonna have in your bin, the bigger your breeding soil can probably be or the more breeding soils you can actually have in there because, actually I'll just quickly jump back into the container again and I'll show you. I'm gonna have to find one real quick, give me a second. Okay, alrighty I found one. So you can see that this one actually has, when my camera focuses, come on, focus for me pretty please. Come on, the viewers need to see it. So you can actually see there's a lot of eggs along the side there, and don't mind this one, there's just a cricket, he's going into his little hole there. But you can actually see there's a few eggs just there, right in the middle of the camera. There's a couple eggs just on top of the soil. So this, this is actually starting to get pretty full. So what we found is, if we've got 5,000 crickets in a bin, one of these little containers is perfect for 5,000 and we can live for three days. And, but then past that day, like I, I think the crickets start to eat the eggs and they actually start to run out of room to be able to breed into. So if you're gonna have bigger bins, right, if you've got bigger bins with more crickets, you can definitely have bigger breeding soils. And you'll see that some of the bigger farms like Entomo Farms in Canada, they actually have just a full room of crickets. And then they've got, um, you would have seen the last video that we put up, the wine racks. They got wine racks all through the facility. And then they pretty much just like have these huge 
long wooden trays that would have been like a meter, they're massive, just full of coconut husk. And that's just because they've got so many crickets and it's like, that's the most efficient way. So they just have to do one big spread of coconut husk, put it in the facility and they would get so many eggs. But for us having individual containers that we have to then move around, then yeah, it's just not as time, time efficient. But if we had a space like them, it might be. However, there is one benefit for us with our facility is we're vertical. So you can see we're going one, two, three, four bins high whereas Entomo Farms in Canada just have a big room and then they've just pretty much got the crickets on the ground and it might only go as high as just these two, like the wine racks might go up. But with our new facility, we, we probably will end up doing these bins again just because, I'll take you outside. So you can see just here, we're at a 40 foot shipping container, which is, you know, yay high. American friends. All right, so the container's about there. Now, if we flip around and have a look at this, sorry about the wind as well. We are going much, much higher. So that's the 40 foot ship container, and then that is our new facility. And so we're going to be doing six bins high. Yeah, like it's it's much, much bigger. So we might have a look at what we're doing with our breeding soils. But for you guys at home, that is just a little update about what we've found to be a lot more efficient in time. We haven't noticed at all a drop off in our cricket population, which is a positive. The crickets still seem to breed and they still seem to enjoy the soil. Um, the coconut husk is working really, really well. We haven't found anything better than that yet. And yeah, so that is what we're doing with our breeding soils. And I hope that was beneficial and I will for sure keep you guys updated on if we change anything else with our breeding soils. But as far as we're concerned, these small ones get the tick of approval. Give them a try. Alrighty guys, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.